The human brain weighs just about 1.4 kilograms, but it has a lot of potential. It's where everything begins, because your brain holds everything. Your thoughts, your memories, your focus, your emotions, your dreams, and even decisions you make. It's who you are, but pour in a few drinks, and that potential begins to blur. Every night, across the world, millions turn to alcohol to relax, socialize, or forget. But behind the buzz lies a neurochemical storm. The truth is, alcohol doesn't just wear off with the hangover. We're going to expose what alcohol really does to your brain, and why it's not just about hangovers. Because when you know what's really going on inside your brain, you get to choose with your eyes open. Most people think of alcohol as something that just helps you loosen up, maybe slow you down a little bit and help take the edge off. But what it actually does is a lot more complicated. When you drink, alcohol travels quickly through your system and crosses into your brain, slipping through the natural barrier that usually protects it. Once it's in there, it messes things up and begins to mess with how your brain communicates. It starts boosting a brain chemical called gamma-aminobutyric acid. GABA is a neurotransmitter, a chemical messenger in your brain. It's the one that slows down your brain by blocking specific signals in your central nervous system and helps you relax. But when GABA is pushed too far, it doesn't just calm you. It quiets your self-control, slowing your thoughts and your reflexes, blurs your coordination, slows down your reaction time, and even slows down your ability to think clearly. It also starts to suppress another brain chemical called glutamate, which helps you think clearly and form memories. That's why, even after just a few drinks, your mind starts to feel fuzzy, your words slurs, and your thoughts start to slip. That's why sometimes we say what we don't mean when drunk. What started as a drink to loosen up can quickly turn your brain into something you can't keep up with. Not because you want it that way, but because that's how alcohol works in the brain. Most of us have had nights where the details get a little blurry. You remember laughing, maybe taking a few photos, and then suddenly it's morning. That's not just forgetfulness. It's just your brain struggling to form memories in real time. One part of the brain in particular takes the hit from the heavy drinking. It's called the hippocampus. It's that part of the brain that's responsible for turning short-term experiences into long-term memory and under heavy alcohol, it pretty much checks out. That's why you might clearly remember ordering another round of drinks, but not the walk home. This is called a fragmentary blackout, and you might not even know it's happening. Sometimes these memory gaps are obvious. Other times, you don't even realize what you've lost because the brain didn't store it in the first place. And the more often you drink heavily, the more pressure you put on that system and the more damaged it gets. It's not just about one night out. It's what builds up over time. So it's obvious that alcohol affects our reaction time, memory, and even mood. But what about our sleep? You've had a rough day, you're tired and stressed out because of the deadline at work, so you decided to drink so you can stop panicking and sleep. But you wake up feeling tired and sleepy and you're left wondering why. Well, it's easy to think alcohol helps you sleep. You feel drowsy, your body relaxes, and before you know it, you're out. But what you don't realize is that the kind of sleep alcohol gives you isn't the kind your brain actually needs. What your brain truly needs is REM sleep. That's that deep restorative phase of sleep where you start to dream, where your mind resets, processes emotion, and locks in memory. After a couple of drinks, your brain struggles to enter REM sleep. In fact, just one night of drinking can cut your REM sleep in half. So even if you sleep for eight hours, you wake up feeling foggy, drained, maybe even anxious. Not because you didn't sleep long enough, but because your brain never got the quality rest it needed. Alcohol-induced sleep is not real sleep. It's sedating. And over time, those rough mornings start to add up and mess with your focus, your mood, and even your ability to handle stress. The effects of alcohol don't always show up right away. Sometimes they build quietly over months, even years. With long-term drinking, the changes in the brain become more visible, especially in the frontal lobe. That's the part of your brain that helps you plan, make decisions, stay rational, manage impulses, and even shape your personality as a person. 
Over time, alcohol can shrink this part of the brain and even moderate drinking. Just a few drinks here and there. Week after week has been linked to lower gray matter volume in the human brain. The damage often depends on how much and how often you drink. But for some people, it doesn't even take much at all because genetics play a big role in their system. You've probably noticed it before that some people seem to handle alcohol better than others. For some people, a single drink hits hard, while for others, they've barely scratched the surface. And while a lot of that credit is given to tolerance, part of it actually goes down to genetics. Some people carry a genetic variation that affects how alcohol gets broken down in the body. Instead of being processed smoothly, it lingers as a toxic compound called acetaldehyde. It is the gene that encodes an enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase 2, which plays a crucial role in the way the body processes and breaks down alcohol by converting acetaldehyde to acetate. This gene is primarily located in the mitochondria and is found in various tissues, including the liver. It's the one that can cause things like facial flushing, nausea, or a racing heart after just a small amount of alcohol. But even if you don't have that gene, it doesn't mean you're in the clear. Acetaldehyde is created in everyone's system when they drink, and it's actually more toxic than the alcohol itself. So whether you feel it or not, your body still has to work hard to clean up the mess after every single drink. This isn't about blame or shame, it's just the truth. Moderate drinking may be culturally accepted, but the brain doesn't care about culture. It responds to chemistry. That doesn't mean you have to quit everything forever, but you deserve to know the truth. And knowing the truth lets you make smarter choices and become a better version of yourself. Your brain does a lot for you, so maybe it's worth protecting. Not perfectly, but just more often. And that's the kind of shift that's needed. You've already taken the first step, which is awareness. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.